In this exciting video, we're going to learn how to levitate objects. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So maybe you're shooting a short film, a product video, or maybe you're looking to just scare some people. Uh, in this video, we're going to show you how to flow any type of object. So you'll need several different household objects to do this effect. So the first thing you'll need is scotch tape. If you're working with heavier objects, duct tape will probably do. The next thing you'll need is string, but if you're on a budget, you can just use your household USB cord. Uh, but really, I was just lazy and I didn't feel like going to the hardware store. Then lastly, you'll just need a gun for all the non-believers out there. So then you can actually start shooting your footage. You can tape your cord or string to the back of your object and shoot your video. And I mean with a camera, not a gun, guys. And then once you're done with that, go ahead and shoot your background plate, which could be you levitating the object or maybe just a background plate in general. So once your footage is shot, we can bring it right over to After Effects and let's drag our plate footage right into our timeline right down here. And here's our, my plate footage where I'm just holding my hand out and we see nothing. And then we'll go in here and we'll bring in our object that we've levitated and I'll drag this right into here. And if we, we can scrub through this entire clip and we want to find a spot where it's basically going to levitate at the right moment. So maybe like right here should be fine. So we can scrub through our entire clip here, which is about five seconds. And that could be okay right there. The first thing we really want to do is isolate this controller. So make sure your playhead is at the beginning of the timeline here. And then we're going to grab the roto brush, which is right here at the top. So we need to double click our clip, which is the controller here. And now we're into a separate layer uh, comp here. And this is now we have our little green cursor here, which is our brush. We can change the brush size right over here if it's too small. And what we can do is just kind of click and start brushing around our object, which in my case is the controller. And what's going to happen is we get this, you know, purple outline of our controller, which basically means it's completely selected. You might want to, you know, take a close look at everything before we move on to our next step, like over here. Uh, we can see that some of the controller is being cut off. So what I'm going to do is just kind of paint right next to the controller right there. And if you paint too much, what you need to do is hold down alt on your keyboard and the subtraction tool will come up here and kind of just paint outside there. And, and now we kind of have a closer sort of brush here and now it's completely isolated. So what we need to do is we want this entire mask to be applied to every frame to the end of our clip here. So if I zoom in here, we kind of see this uh, tracker sort of thing here. What we need to do is kind of drag this out all the way to the end of our clip, which is about right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to zoom right out and we're going to click on this freeze button. And what that's going to do is going to analyze every frame in here. So this could take a few minutes to analyze all the way through. And this could be a good time to maybe pour a cup of coffee, take a walk, or if you're really cool, uh, you would go rob a store like me. So I'll be right back. So I'm back and unfortunately I didn't get to rob a store because on my way to robbing the store I got mugged and the thief stole my shoes and I didn't want to walk into a store and have no shoes. So that didn't happen. All right, enough of the horrible jokes. So if we scrub through here, if we go back to our composition here at the top and we scrub through our footage here, uh, we'll see that the controller is you know, mostly isolated. However, there are some you know, rough edges here. And what's great about this uh, you know, rotor brush effect is that we can refine this and make this look really nice. So we're gonna come here to the contrast, maybe increase that by a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and lower the edge or the shift edge a little bit. And one thing we're going to go ahead and increase is the feather. Maybe bring that up to like 13 or so. And we're getting pretty close. And what we're going to do is go to effect color correction curves. And really what's sticking out at me here is that it's not blending in with our footage so much. And plus it's kind of big anyway. But first we'll go to this curves effect and we'll kind of you know darken it. You might need a you know, light in your object. It just all depends on you know what your footage looks like. But for the most part that looks pretty decent. But first we'll go ahead and scale this in here and maybe we'll make some more changes as we move forward. So make sure your controller layer is selected and actually let me rename this to uh, object. Make sure this layer is selected and hit S ring keyboard for scale and we can scale this right in here and maybe like that. And then we'll hit P on our keyboard for position and then we can kind of just position this right in place. Maybe readjust the scale by a little bit. Yeah, you know, I have really big hands. I'm just a really big person. 
but uh, that doesn't look realistic. And, you know, that looks pretty good. If we scrub through here, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me how I do it. <laughs> you know, you just kind of be born with it. So maybe we can make a little bit, you know, more adjustments. Maybe we can increase the feather by a little bit to blend that in there. If I touch more, maybe if we have to, we can bring down the contrast on the controller just by a touch. And then, you know, basically we're done. You might want to, you know, animate the position here to kind of, you know, follow your hand. But, you know, for me that you don't really have to do that. So, but just keep that in mind if you have to do something like that. And of course, with a little bit of adjustment layer, so let's go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and a little bit of color correction here can really help blend these together a little bit better. So maybe I'll apply, apply the uh, brightness and contrast effect and we'll increase the contrast by a touch. Oh, maybe not that much. Uh, that should be okay. Maybe increase the brightness by a little bit. Let's go to effect, color correction, hue and saturation, and maybe we'll just increase the saturation by a little bit. And it looks, you know, pretty good. Uh, maybe we can take down the blues a little bit so we can go to the uh, con channel control and go to the blues and you know you can always you know bring that down so you can actually come into the channel controls and you can isolate you know sort of your range of colors here and for the most part that does blend really well uh, if we have to we can create another adjustment layer go to effect color correction and use lumetri color this only is in i think in, a, in the past two versions of after effects lumetri color so if you're using a very early version you're not going to have lumetri color but for the most part this is a good effect we can go here the color wheels you know maybe bring down the shadows to the blues you know maybe bring up the midtones into the greens by a touch and then maybe go right into the highlights and bring that up by a little bit and the midtones might be a little too much for my taste but yeah so a little before and after here you know, that looks just pretty clean. Then let's go right into like this creative tab and just, you know, bring up the saturation a little bit more. And, you know, I think it looks pretty awesome. So it blends really well together. And after a quick render, this is what we have. And now you have the power to make your grandmother have a heart attack. So, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this and drop a like if you did enjoy the video. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of those videos. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a good day.